Okay, I guess I'll try this again. I fucking cleared the cache, restarted the phone. Did everything I could think of to try and see if I could get this thing to fucking work. It keeps screwing up. Every time I try to record something, it keeps stopping. Oh, shut the fuck up. I'll turn that off, too, so it doesn't do that shit. <laughs> okay, so... I've been dealing with so much fucking weird shit. I don't know how to describe the shit other than... Without... I don't know how to describe the shit that I've been dealing with without sounding like a fucking maniac or something. Like, sounding like I'm crazy. Like I'm just having weird hallucinations... The shit has been going on and it's been fucking, like, really happening, though, you know? I've been dealing with, with all kinds of weird shit, man. I've seen things that... But I, I don't know what to do about it, you know? I don't know what, what the fuck I can do about it, because it's just all this weird shit going on. It seems completely insane, you know? I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do. It's kind of been ramping up lately. I don't know. This one dude, I don't know what I think about this guy. I think he he's made some good videos in the past. I think he might have kind of gone dark or something though, but there's a uh, he made this video said uh, you know, targeted individuals uh, greenlit by the devil or some shit like that. That's what it feels like. It's like I'm like I'm dealing with on a massive scale just a huge number of I don't know what. It's almost like I'm like I'm in uh, I re I realize how nuts this sounds, but it, it it almost feels like I'm in like fucking invasion of the body snatchers or some shit. Like I'm surrounded by fucking like possessed like body snatcher alien people or something they're just like fucking with me to no end like there's some sort of supernatural force at work that's just screwing with me on a massive scale Stop this shit. God, it's been fucking... I don't know what to do, man. It's like there's... I've seen things, man. I've experienced things that are... Just really goddamn spooky, man. You know it's like feeling like you're one of the only people on the fucking planet that's still human or something almost? Like not... I, I know it's not just me. I know there's other people that have experienced that experienced similar things. Because, you know, some of them are out on YouTube making videos talking about this shit. They go through. I mean, it sucks, you know, because you can't fucking hardly talk to anybody about what you're, what's going on. Everybody will just think you're fucking nuts. Right? Well, the damn thing's recording four and a half minutes in so far. It hasn't stopped by itself, so that's nice. It's just... Shit's been really goddamn weird, man. Really weird. And I'm so sick of it. I just want to have somewhat of a normal life. 
I'll tell you what it feels like, though, is like it feels like I'm surrounded by, like, I don't know. Well, like I said, almost like invasion of the body snatchers or like demons or something just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much about that, yeah. It's really fucking weird. Like there's some kind of weird shit like God and the devil kind of shit playing out in my life. On um. Well Yeah, what it seems like is it seems like there's some kind of like I've already said it, you know. So much strange stuff going on that I cannot fucking explain without just come, sounding like a lunatic or something, you know? There's, there's so many different layers to it, really. So many different levels, different layers, different aspects of the kind of weird shit that I go through, like, on a, on a basic level, for instance, uh, I don't know, I've given some examples before, some of this shit just sounds weird and, like, innocuous, kind of, but it's, like, a whole lot of things that kind of add up, you know, and a whole lot of, part of it, it, it I don't know, a series of non-stop, strange, what you would initially call like coincidences and just weird oddities and things like that but when it just goes on and on and on and it's one after another after another after another and it never stops you know it gets to be pretty obvious that it's not it's not just coincidental <laughs> well like for instance the last time I went out dashing right I mean I, I'd see the I'll see like the same exact fucking license plates all over the place. Like everywhere I go, I'm being fucking followed or, and sometimes they're in front of me. Sometimes they're behind me, you know, I could go to another town, uh, another, another example of this sort of shit I deal with is like, well, like for instance, I went to the coast, uh, years back, right? And this is like almost a hundred miles away from, from, you know, where I live, right? I was trying to get away from shit. And for a little while, it seemed like I did. But then before long, you know, I'd walk into a convenience store to get a Slurpee and the person behind the counter knows my name. I never told him my fucking name and they're calling me by name and shit. <laughs> I'll start seeing cars that I recognize from fucking, you know, that have been following me around my local town. Now they're at the coast too. The same fucking license plate, same cars, you know. Are we running into fucking people with 666s six, six, and pentagrams and Baphomet shirts everywhere I fucking go, you know. Like one license plate this car that fucking gets in front of me a lot of the time or ends, ends up, you know, one, one of the license, I don't know, I'll give you some example. Some of the strange things, license plates is one of the things that, like, if I start paying attention, there's all kinds of weird shit in the license plates of the cars when I'm driving down the street and stuff. Like, there's this one license plate that says Creep 1 or something. You know? Sometimes I'll go to the store to, you know, to go shopping or something. There will be all these license plates. It'll say, one of them will say, uh, elbow. Another says eyes. Another says knees. Another says, you know, just weird shit. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it's supposed to mean, right? And then almost everywhere I get, I'll have these days where I go out to do DoorDash, right? And like, Like, all day long, I'm just delivering to one address after another all over town. And they're all, like, 
you know, 322, 316, 777, or 666, or 665, 667, you know. Right? You see what I'm saying, right? Like that kind of shit. Or like I'll have a, a day when things are going good. When like the DoorDash is going good. And uh, making making money and things are going good that day. And there will be a car in front of me with like 316 on the license plate. And like every address I'm delivering to is 315 or 317 or something like that. I'm delivering to streets like, you know, joy and harmony and kingdom and stuff like that, you know. And the people ordering the food are, have names like Joseph and Jacob and, you know, <laughs> Noah, you know, shit like that, right? <laughs> And then another day, things are going bad, and I'm delivering all day to, like, 665 and 667, 666, and there's license plates with the 666 in them everywhere I go. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm delivering to people named fucking Damien or some shit, you know? You know, shit like that. That's, the, that's what I'm talking about, right? It's just fucking weird, man. And it's, like, all the fucking time, man. And lately, they've been fucking with my car, right? I've replaced the EGR valve in my car. Uh, fucking coil pack for cylinder one and two, or no, two and four. Done this shit just in the last couple weeks. And the car will be running fine for a day or two after I do some repair. And when within like a couple days, suddenly there's some new fucking problem that pops up, you know? can't afford to just throw a bunch of money at it to, to, you know, like I could probably just use a tune-up, but a tune-up on this thing costs like fucking four or five hundred dollars, because every single, it's got, you know, eight, I mean, the fucking spark plugs are hard to get to, they're deep in some kind of cavity in the engine compartment, buried under a bunch of other shit, with an individual coil pack on every single one of them, and the coil packs are 60 bucks a piece, and there's fucking eight of them, you know? <laughs> Tried to call up a mechanic shop to ask if they would be willing just to swap out uh, spark plugs and just not even bother with the coil packs, and they're like... They quoted me something close to $400 to do that, right? I just keep having to dump more and more money into the damn thing. Like, every dollar I fucking make going out dashing has just ends up going back into... Having to keep the car running. I keep having to put more gas in it and do more maintenance and more maintenance and more maintenance. And at this point, it's already... I don't have much longer than like a week, basically. What is it? Less than 10 days or something until the month is over. I feel like I should just be packing my shit, taking it to storage, and, you know, put, dump whatever money I can into keeping the car running to live in the fucking car, I guess. I don't know. I, I mean, I could pay the bills, be stuck here in this place surrounded by Satanists for another month or something, right? I got all kinds of people, like, showing up. Dude, the minute I fucking moved in here, and, it, and it's not just here, man. I moved to another town for like uh, like a year ago or something. I was living in another town, a neighboring town, and all these fucking people that I haven't seen in like ten or more years or something that I've been trying to avoid, these you know gang stalker type fuckers, they just start showing up. They're suddenly they're surrounding and they're walking around outside my apartment. They're finding where the fuck I live and all this shit, you know. 
It's like, what the fuck? And of course they gave me apartment number 13 in the fucking basement across from the meth heads and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been like this the whole fucking time, dude. Everywhere I fucking go, dude, everywhere I go, it's like I'm just surrounded by the shit, you know? Surrounded by this darkness. And everything just trying to fall apart on me. I feel like I always have to be on the defensive. Like I always have to be ready to like... <sighs> and it, it, it's stressful, man. It's really goddamn stressful. Fucking crazy, man. <sighs> I don't know. One thing that I've noticed that I guess you could say this is kind of normal, but it's I feel like I'm always surrounded by people that are like... People that I sense just really just want to take advantage of me and use me and rob me and hurt me kind of thing, you know? Like... That'll act buddy-buddy. But it's like, they're, it's like they're really just fucking out to get me or something kind of thing. It's always been this way, man, basically, for, for a long, long time in my life, you know? It's like, even if I don't have a lot, if I don't have much of anything, whatever the fuck I have, they want it, right? It's, it's like I'm surrounded by people that, I don't know, it's, I get this sense that people are, like, jealous of everything like if I have a pack of cigarettes they're jealous and they want to steal my pack of cigarettes or they want to you know whatever the fuck right it doesn't matter what it is I could be driving a car or even an old you know beat up fucking car and they'll be people tell me hey man nice car And, but it's not like they, they're like, oh, good for you, you have a nice car. It's like they're jealous and they want to fucking, they want me to lose everything kind of thing. That, that's the kind of sense that I get from people, right? In a lot of ways, it's even like my own fucking family, I feel that way. Like, like I'm just surrounded by fucking people that... Feels like they want me to have nothing... I feel like I gotta get out of here, man. I mean... Oh. This is, this is kind of what I, I'm trying to like figure out a way to describe like how my life seems like it's been. Uh, well, here's an example. 
this is a fairly, you know, simple, good example. Um, back in 2015, when they made it legal to grow weed around here, right? I grew some weed that first year. And all of a sudden, I got a whole bunch of buddies around just good old pals that I hadn't talked to in many years, probably over 10 years. So it's like, hey, buddy, right? And of course, you know, the second that the weed runs out, so do the buddies. You know what I mean? Or. Or maybe I'll have a case of beer or something and some buddies will be around to drink my beer until I'm out of beer and then nowhere to be seen, right? That kind of shit, right? Or like I had a bit of money a couple years back, right? And... My sister was still in contact with me. My mom's husband, John, was still around. I had this this girl that was, you know, probably almost could have been a girlfriend kind of thing. And they were around in communication with me. And it's the reason why I stuck around here and didn't get the fuck out of here years ago was because I didn't want to just run off and ditch them. But the second I run out of that fucking extra money... The second I no longer have enough to get the fuck out of here, they're nowhere to be seen. They're fucking gone. Mm -hmm. Hell, my dad wanted me to live, move in with him. He tried to talk me into moving in with him. But I could tell. Well, he wanted me to move in with him when I had all that money in the fucking bank. And then as soon as I don't have all that money in the bank, all of a sudden he ain't got no place for me to stay anymore. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm talking about. He just want, but you could tell by the way he would talk, he just sounded like he wanted me there so he could, like, work me like a slave or something and probably charge me, you know, charge me rent or something to stay in the basement of his house until I ran out of money so he could then boot me out or something after he took all my money kind of thing. But that's the way it feels like it's been going in my life, man. <sighs> it's fucking shitty. I guess in a way it's kind of always been like that and I always end up being the sucker or whatever right uh, want to be nice or help people or whatever the fuck and you get to realize though that when you're down and out nobody's there you know I mean, but this is true for, I think that, I guess this, in a lot of ways, this is probably almost universally true. You don't have fucking real people in your life, right? Like, I would imagine that even, like, Hollywood movie stars and shit and pro athletes and stuff like that are just fucking surrounded by fake-ass people that if they ever lost all their money and everything, like, they could, they could just as easily end up sleeping under a bridge because nobody would have a couch for them to crash on. Even, even if they had, uh, you know, bought everybody a Cadillac and, you know, been super generous and nice to everybody. The second they fucking are in need, there's nobody's around, you know. That's kind of what it's felt like in my life a lot of the time. That's just like the regular shit, you know. I feel like I've just been surrounded by people that 
mostly corrupting influences and users. If not users, then at least corrupting influences, right? But I don't know. I don't know, man. Well, it's kind of like it's like on a universal level when it comes to almost everything, it feels like. You understand the, the concept of a scavenger smoker? Right? Like, I know, this this is this is a strange thing, like, um... Well, it's like, if you have a pack of cigarettes, there's gonna be all kinds of people coming up to you saying, Hey man, hey, can I bum a smoke? Hey, you got any cigarettes? Right? If, if people are hungry and you've got food, they want your food. If, if, if you know, if you've got weed... People are going to know about it, and they're just going to show up and be like, Hey, man, can you smoke a bowl? Kick me down a bowl, or right? It's like that, but it's like that with every fucking thing, it seems like. You know? But for the most part, they wouldn't be there for you if you were down now. Like, in most instances, like, if you didn't have any money or any cigarettes, you walk up to somebody that's got them, most people are going to tell you to fuck off. Probably, right? I guess I've kind of been a sucker, you know? I really need to stay away from goddamn alcohol and shit because I can see that it just, it's making me, I mean, I can get crazy and scary or whatever, but it's like people, people will show, will show up in my life if I've got alcohol and try to take advantage of me and manipulate me and shit like that. I can see that. It's like this, like shark smelling blood in the water or something, you know? Starts circling around. What's that Bible passage? Uh, the devil prowleth about like a rep roaring lion seeking whom he may devour kind of thing. Right, yeah. It was be sober and be vigilant for the devil prowls about like a ravenous lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. So I know I need to fucking try to stay sober. But I'm, I feel like I'm just dealing with all this crazy shit going on all the damn time and I just want to fucking rest and I just want to try to escape from it, you know? I don't like living this way. I don't like feeling like I'm always fucking... It just is what it is, man. You know, no rest for the weary kind of thing. For the most part. I've been, I keep trying to go out and fucking do the right things. I'll sober up and go out and fucking work. I'll, I'll put in effort to get my car running better and, and things will start to go good for a little while and then a couple days go by and everything goes back to being shit. That's what keeps happening, basically. <laughs> a couple months ago, I was kind of coming out ahead somewhat. I thought things were starting to look, you know, look up somewhat. I was starting to, like, slowly, like, slowly but surely getting ahead, like, slowly.
I managed to build up somewhat of a credit score. Been renting for, I mean, this place for almost a year. I keep the place relatively well picked up. Usually keep myself relatively clean cut, you know. When I go out to work and, you know, take care of things, I manage to go take care of things, but it's just like, There's just so much fucking darkness. I always seem to be surrounded by so much fucking darkness. And a lot of it, for me, is really difficult to understand, kind of. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about the whole religious thing or whatever. It, it all seems pretty weird to me. Like, every aspect of it, good, bad, or whatever, seems weird, but what seems really weird, though, is, like, I realized more is, is like, the, the witchy stuff and the Satanist stuff. That seems kind of extra weird, because, like, I mean, you can, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to look into things and see that there's all kinds of really horrible, evil shit happening in the world. And that in most instances, or in many instances, it's a bunch of people with devil horns and baphomets and satanic pentagrams that are involved in fucking, like, child trafficking and fucking all kinds of, like, horrible shit. Super evil shit. <laughs> I mean, look at the fucking, the, you know, the governments and stuff like that. The New World Order or whatever the hell you want to say, right? You know, what do you start to see when you peel back the layers and you look at that? You see a bunch of people doing weird rituals and praising the devil and stuff like that, basically, in reality, right? <laughs> yeah. It's freaking crazy, man. I don't know, I've seen all kinds of weird shit, dude. Some of the stuff I've seen, I usually don't even talk about it, because, I mean, as crazy as some of the shit I've said so far sounds, like, I've seen crazier. I've seen shapeshifters, man. N numerous, like, quite a few times, that's one thing. How fucking crazy is that, dude? I don't think they're all necessarily bad, but there's something weird here, man, like... Sometimes I wonder, though, like, am I... I actually question, like, when I see stuff like that, I... I can't help but, like, question, like, am I just tripping or something, or... Did this really fucking happen, you know? <laughs> Well, like, the, the, 
I can give you a number of examples over the last couple years, especially, right? Um, well, there were the people that managed the, uh, the motel I was staying at before they got fired or whatever, right? I saw them... <clears throat> I saw this on like a couple of cases, mainly it was this one day, I'll admit I'd been drinking, but I saw, I saw them, I mean these are people that are like probably in their mid-30s or something, close to my age, but one day they looked like they were fucking teenagers, this guy and the girl. Both looked like they were like 16 or 17 or some shit all of a sudden. Yeah. And there was also this dude at this apartment I stayed at before. Uh, at least they said it, they called it an apartment. I wouldn't really consider it to be one because I didn't even have my own microwave or kitchen of any sort. You know, it was just a shitty room in a basement. But. But anyways, there was this old guy, right? He's like in his 90s. And he lived upstairs. Like he had to walk down steep stairs and shit. And he, he would go out and get in his van and drive away, go to the gym, etc., etc., right? And this guy was like 98 years old or something, right? This old black man, right? James, I think was his name, right? I walked out one night to smoke a cigarette and I walked out to the backyard and I seen this guy, this, this black guy, look looked like he was maybe 50. And I said, hey, how's it going, right? And I walk around the corner and there's James standing there. Like he had just shifted back. Yeah. Like he age shifted. I mean, that would make more sense. Like how he's able to get, you know, get up and down the stairs and how he's able to, you know, go to go out and go to the gym and take off driving in his van and stuff. If he's able to like shape shift to, to make himself younger or something. Right? I've seen, mostly I've seen stuff like that. I've seen people that, you know, sometimes they look much older, sometimes they look much younger, you know. I've seen this dude, Bill, I know, shift a number of times. Uh, weird shit there, like, like one day he's got like, you know, gray and white hair and Another day, he looks like he's 20 years younger or something. Blonde hair. And I seen some dude at 7-Eleven uh, that looked like what I would imagine he must have looked like, you know, 40 years ago or something, you know? <laughs> it looked like him, but, like, way too young. But hell, maybe it was, because I've seen this sh sort of shit, you know? I've seen other shit, too, though. I've seen that. There was this dude I ran into at the park. I was like drunk and I had weed and stuff. So yeah, I was, I was probably drunk and stoned or whatever, right? I was sitting in the park over there and uh, this white dude that looked to be about 5'9 or 5'10 talked with a lisp, walks up and like I was drunk and had much weed in my pocket, I tossed him some weed, said, here man, 
He looked like he was homeless or something in the park or something. Walked with a limp, stuttered and stuff. And he says, hey man, you wanna go smoke some of this? Like, we'll just smoke one. I was like, I guess. I start following the dude. And all of a sudden he gets like a foot shorter and now he's like a little black dude, little black guy. It's like about, I don't know, maybe five feet tall or something. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Nah, man, I'm a... So, I mean, that's pretty fucking nuts. I mean, I'll give you that, right? <laughs> but no, I've seen things like that, you know? I've seen fucking weird, weird things. I saw this thing one time. Mostly I could see it in the, on the, I had a surveillance cameras up in our yard. There was all kinds of weird shit that went on where I lived uh, in the past for like, you know, 20 something years or something from about the time I was 17 or 18. I think I was like uh, maybe 17 until I, until just a couple years ago, basically two and a half years, three years, whatever. I lived my mom there on the cut, you know, uh, and these fucking neighbors. There was weird shit going on all the time, man. And I started to notice, I started, because I, I started getting a little paranoid about it, because some weird, like, you know, I was, I was looking into some of, like, the religious aspects, trying to, trying to make sense of what the fuck was going on, right? I started looking things up, like, looking up, uh, occult holidays and things like that. And there's all these fucking weird pagan holidays and stuff like that I found out about, and, like, these satanic fucking... And I swear to God, all the time when these things are going on, when it's when it's some kind of weird fucking holiday, and there's tons of them. But when it's like shit like that is going down, there's weird crap going on all around me. Like they used to have these big fucking parties across the street. There'd be like fifty or a hundred people would show up. I mean, you know basically a bunch of tweakers with fucking pit bulls and shit like that, you know, across the street. But they'd have these bonfires in the backyard and shit. And I started noticing, like, I'd see these the flames rising up in the sky and the, the light of the fire reflecting. And I'd look, and it would, I would, I'd look it up on the internet, like, is there some kind of weird holiday? And like, yep. Right? <laughs> been dealing with weird shit my whole life, man. My sister is, like, into, uh, like, witchy stuff. Trying to drag me into it from the time I was a little kid kind of thing. Her and her friends doing their fucking rituals. She had her, her fucking altar and everything. Not just in my personal life, but, like, everywhere I've noticed... There's, it's going on like all over the place. It's huge on a, on a massive scale. It seems like you know, like um, one example I'll give you that didn't I don't think had much to do with me, but like I used to work. Um, I would clean my mom's uh, hair yeah, beauty shop that she had there every week, right? At this retirement home, there was this lady. Uh, old lady living there, I guess. I, I don't remember if I even knew her or anything, but I know her, the name on the door said Blessing. So, like, her last name was Blessing or something. And they had start the, at the Oaks there, they'd put out, like, you know, it was getting towards Christmas or some shit like that, so they were putting, like, stars and Christmassy ornaments. And I noticed that somebody had made some, like, wooden Baphomet thing and stuck it on her door. 
like some satanic fucking ritual shit had been put on her door by somebody. Right? Like, I've dealt with this weird crap just has been kind of surrounding me most of my whole life. always wanted to, tried to be good and stuff, you know. Hmm. Trying to get out of, uh, I've just been, I've been trying to get away from the darkness and get into the light basically for years, for, for so long, but I've just been constantly surrounded by this darkness everywhere. It's like it's it's out to fucking just I don't know corrupt or destroy me or something kind of thing, and it's just like fuck. It's so damn stressful because every time I try to get ahead and try to get out of this shit, try to get away from this shit, the darkness it follows me, you know. For years. In the past, when I was, when I was living with my mom, and the out, the outside world was so screwed up, and I and I did I was dealing with the same kind of weird, crazy shit then, the weird targeted individual shit, where every time I go shopping, there'd be weird shit going on. Like I go to a grocery, go to. <laughs> I'll give you an example of the kind of shit that happened, right? And, and this is the shit that's been going on for years that's got so fucking normalized because it's all the fucking time, basically. And sometimes I've managed to get away for a little while to, like... And that's what makes it so obvious is that sometimes I've managed... I've learned, like, some tricks to where I can kind of get away from it for a minute. Not for long, but like I've learned how to kind of, like I've had times where I've learned little like mind, mind tricks to like sort of cloud uh, my visualization in my mind. Because it's like the fucking things can read my mind or something. But if I cloud... Like, if I'm not projecting my thoughts in my mind, and if I manage to, like, cloud them out, and, like, well, basically it's like this. It's like, if I, if I wanted to go to, say, McDonald's or something, right, just as a for instance, if I'm thinking in my mind that I want to go to McDonald's, and I'm visualizing McDonald's, and I'm planning a route to take, and I'm Maybe I even tell somebody I'm going to McDonald's, whatever the fuck. I'll go there, and there's, like, nowhere to park because it's just so fucking crowded and, you know, it's just, I'm just surrounded by, like, hundreds of fucking people can't even hardly move because it's so crowded when I show up there. On the other hand, if I don't visualize it in my mind, I don't think out loud about it, and so on and so forth, And I just take off driving, maybe even uh, think in my mind that I'm planning to go somewhere else. But then I just randomly turn into McDonald's. Guess what? There's nobody there. Yeah. So like, it's shit that I deal with all the time. And I still deal with, I still deal with this shit. There's, there's, a lot, I mean, there's the numbers. I know a lot of people talk about seeing 11, 11, 444 and all this other kind of shit, right? 
Well, these numbers pop up like all the time, especially 666 and 316, right? And 777 some, but like there's all this like weird sh <laughs> Like I described how some days when I'm out dashing, you know, it seems like like there's good good things are going on, things are going well, it's almost like God's got my back and things are happening good. And then other times there's just like darkness. Like on a bad day I'll go out and you know, I'll change the radio to three different stations and the three stations I switch to will be playing fucking Highway to Hell, Sympathy for the Devil, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of shit, right? And there will be a car in front of me with a 666 license plate. I'll be getting orders from some guy named Damien or some other weird shit like that. They're just like totally fake sounding names. And their address will be like 665 or 667 or whatever the fuck, right? Across the street, you know. I'll be get, getting orders to a bunch of different fucking addresses with like, you know, 665, 666 and... It'll be across the street from an address 322 or, you know, shit like that, right? <laughs> Man, it's fucking weird. And it's stressful, man. I mean... What I would do when I was living at my mom's for a while is I just started to... I would go to the... Gro to try and get away from, like, the darkness and shit sometimes, I would just... I would have these periods of time where I would be able to kind of get away from the darkness and I would... I would quit drinking for, you know, a month or more at a time and I would be cleaning all the negative energy out of the place and like it had stopped I would just go to a grocery store and buy like groceries for the entire month and just sit back in my room or walk around the backyard or something and you know go sit and look at the birds or something you know and grow a garden and stuff like that and I would have a little these periods of time where things were okay when the super crazy shit wasn't happening so much. Because I just didn't go anywhere. Because if I went anywhere, then the fucking crazy shit would start up again. You know? There's been all kinds of strange shit that's happened in my life, and it's sometimes it feel it feels like the people in my life, like even family members and people closest to me, in some way have been involved, like as perps or whatever. Kind of like, I'll give you an example. Um, a number of years back, say almost almost ten years ago now, I got a DUI. I had quit drinking for like three and a half months, right? And I try and I thought maybe I could find a girlfriend. I started looking for like a good, basically a good Christian woman, a good good woman, you know, that was. And this chick shows up. I meet up with this girl, and she turns out to be basically a harlot, you know, straight up like goth looking fucking trying to, you know, seduce me or whatever the fuck, right? And I, I basically resisted the temptation. And then the next day, the next day, it was like a blood moon. The last blood moon that just happened to fall on this, on the fucking, you know, Jewish religious holiday, right? And...
and it wasn't, it was like that night, and no, it was the next day, the next day, I thought, oh, I'll control myself, I'll just have one or two beers, and I'll be fine, right, and I ended up getting drunk, I went and bought cigarettes and cigars, I hadn't smoked in months either, and I go over to this dude Bill's house, uh, apartment or whatever, right, and he was doing some kind of weird fucking shit, um, I don't know how to describe it exactly. Um, he would put paint on a piece of paper, right? And hold the torch back away from it. And it's like he was painting with a tor with fire, with a torch. And and it would sh it would he would create all these paintings where there were all these like demonic looking faces and stuff like that showing up in the fucking paint, right? Yeah. It wasn't much longer after that, within like a week or two of that, that I ended up getting a DUI on Friday the 13th. And I went out, and there was like nobody out there on the road. Like, I was like the only car on the road. And these cops came from like miles away and just hauled ass and chased me. Like, I don't even know where the fuck they came from. They came out from some back road out somewhere and... I even saw on the video, like, it makes no sense, because they didn't see me drive past. It's like somebody called them, or, like, they just came out of, I don't know where, and just started hauling ass and coming after me. And this multiple cars pulled me over. I got a DUI, Friday the 13th, like, not long after a fucking weird blood moon thing that happened, and all that kind of shit, and I've been, right? Like, this is the kind of weird shit that's gone on in my life. That kind of fucked my life for years and years, you know? The thing is now, now, for the last year or so, I don't have the option to shut myself off from the outside world for long. I have to go out because I have to chase money and I've got all these responsibilities, all these things I have to do. So I, I and, and the area that I'm in is like, there's, it's just massive, like, there's just basically darkness everywhere. And the shit is crazy, man. I mean, Targeted individual is a term that most people use for this sort of shit, but it's, it's fucking weird, man. It's like you're getting followed by like a thousand fucking people or more or something like that, right? It's like the whole fucking world just goes crazy and it's putting on a fucking crazy, scary, spooky fucking crazy show for you. Just to like fuck with your head and take away your peace. You know. I'll give you another example. The fucking motel room I stayed at, right? Uh, I stayed there for like... When I first moved in there, there was like nobody there. I was one of the only people staying at the motel. And it was actually like that for a while. Things seemed okay, but like when I ended up getting back, uh, like out of the apartment thing that I was that I was in for a while, which that was I was surrounded in darkness the whole time there, basically. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird fucking like satanic shit surrounding me there. As soon as I got back to that motel again, though, all of a sudden I go from being like the only person there. To, like, the place would just be full occupancy. There were, like, fucking four or five white fucking vans with blacked out windows parked, like, right in front of my fucking door, room door, you know. <laughs> Some guy that would fucking, like, rev up his motorcycle and fucking, like, right out front of my door in the middle of the night and shit. He'd, like, ride his motorcycle up on the fucking sidewalk and, like, 
rev his motorcycle up right in front of my fucking door. Like, this is the kind of shit I'm talking about, man. Like... <laughs> A lot of aspects of this place, it almost seems like I'm in some kind of a, I don't know, computer simulation or like a dream world, but like my capabilities that I would have in a dream world are not there. I don't know, it's like, it's, it's like I'm in a dream that I'm not in control of. That there's like some sort of dark forces guiding the fucking path of my dream. It's kind of what it's like. Uh, in large part, not all the time though. Like I said, sometimes I've managed to get into like a, a mental state to where it was like... Like I had a greater degree of control or something. I've seen some strange shit. <laughs> Put it that way. Like, um... Some... I don't know, there's... I, there have been times where it's like I've been able to get into this state of mind I don't know how to describe it other than to, to say um, it's like thought beyond thought it's like outside of my mind like it's like being knowing versus thinking I, I don't know how to describe it it's like But when I've been in that state, it's like I've been able to 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 do things and to have a, a degree of, of control over my surroundings somewhat. But it's hard to maintain that for long. Things get pretty weird. But during the periods where I have... Like when I first moved into this fucking apartment here, man, for a while there, it was like the it was like uh, like the controllers forgot to spawn the outside world, so I could open up the window and look out the bathroom window, and there would be like no cars, no people walking around, no cars, just total emptiness, total abandon, like. Which doesn't make sense because we're talking about like, a, I'm located on a cross section of two major roads, one of them being Main Street, you know? <laughs> so it doesn't make sense for there not to be any cars, you know? <laughs> I should feel bad. I found my cigarettes. So nobody swiped my cigarettes. <laughs> I thought that girl fucking walked off with him. There was this girl that showed up and I don't know, I was drunk and she was like Asking if I had anything to eat, and she seemed like she was high as a kite, like totally gone, you know? She said she wasn't on anything. I was actually kind of worried about her, but... Then I thought she might have swiped my cigarettes because my, I, I gave her a couple cigarettes or something, and then 
I was looking around and I couldn't find my cigarettes. And I looked all over the place, I thought. Apparently they fell back behind the bed and were like covered in part of a sheet so I couldn't see them even when I looked under the bed. <sighs> now I feel bad. I don't know what the heck that was about, man. <laughs> I don't know, it was me being a sucker because I was drunk or whatever. I felt bad for her. I don't know what the hell. Now I feel stupid for... Well, I don't know, it was like she wanted to hang around here, it seemed like. But she was pretty freaking out of it the whole time, like, and I felt, and I, I started to get really paranoid, like, I felt like, like it was some kind of trap, I started to feel like maybe it was some kind of trap, like, like somebody was out to get me or something. She was making me kind of paranoid, like, I don't know, I don't know, I just had, I, I was getting like weird vibes, like something weird was, hap something weird was going on, you know? I couldn't. I couldn't quite figure out, you know, what the hell was going on. I just had a weird feeling like something wasn't right, like... I don't know, like, like it was some kind of trap or something, you know? <sighs> it was just maybe being paranoid or something. Or maybe it was, you know, the... whatever she was on or something, maybe, you know, I'm... I, I, I'm a little, I have a little bit of a, like, empath. Well, you know people talk about being empaths? I must be, like, the worst kind of empath. You know? Because it's like other people... It's not like, uh, I'm not like the kind of, you know, the good kind of empath that's like, oh, I see you're feeling a certain way, how may I help you? I... I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the cut, like... Well, like... It, it's like I, it's like other people's energy rubs off on me. Like, if I'm around somebody that's high on meth or something, I feel like I'm fucking high on meth. Just because, like, whatever mental energies or whatever coming off of them affect me, you know? If somebody's fucking stoned and I'm around people that are stoned, I feel like I'm fucking stoned, even though I didn't smoke anything. Yeah. Some people might think that sounds good, but it's not good. <laughs> it's not. It's really not. Well, like, I could have a few beers and seem totally drunk because I'm around other people that are drinking beers. And because they were drinking too or whatever, it's like... The amount of beer that I drank adds to all the fucking alcohol that all of them collectively drank. Right? And it's like it affects my mind on that level to where it's like I'm fucking totally wasted kind of thing. And I've, in the past, like when I was younger, I think I was even able to do it the other way around. Like I could make somebody else drunk and I would suddenly, you know, yeah, like I could get drunk and I could send my drunk to somebody else and they would be drunk and I would be sober suddenly. Yeah. I know that sounds fucking nuts, but it's like. I don't know if I can still do that, but...
Maybe I yeah, fuck. I did that in like to somebody I was talking to in Yahoo chat one time years ago, I remember. I was like super high. They were talking to me and they hadn't done anything. They were like totally sober. And it's like I took their sober and they said they were saying they were like falling out of their chair fucking wasted, you know. All of a sudden. And I didn't even I don't know what the hell this shit is. Like, it, it's weird, man. It's like there's some kind of weird... I don't know, a lot of times I think that this... I can't think of a better fucking analogy for what we have going on here than to, than to, to think of it as like a, a computer simulation. Because a computer simulation I can understand... I can't make heads or tails out of this if it's some kind of world of magic and or something, you know. Then it, it doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense to me. I don't have much frame of reference to understand what the hell that is. Really, you know. It's it's confusing, it's strange, it's it's just But that's what it seems like. It seems like I'm in some kind of weird world where there's some kind of like, you know, I don't know, good and evil, but mostly evil all over the place. But I also get the sense that it's like me and a number of other people, like we are some kind of powerful creator beings or something but we're so outnumbered and manipulated and surrounded by other people that it's like they're using our own power to cause all this darkness in the world by stealing it like like we're being drained yeah that's what it seems like it seems like like we're in a world where it's like there's these parasitic energy vampires or something that have no real power to speak of of their own except that that they steal from us but they're able to steal our power somehow and use it for all this darkness to manifest all kinds of yeah some, it's something like that I don't know what the hell to make of this shit. Oh shit, I've been going on for over an hour. <laughs> I guess I should just cut the fucking thing off now before I keep going, keep yammering on for hours or something. It is though, it's like there's this It's like there's this intense darkness in the world, but it feels like, well, in some ways I find myself agreeing with some of the stuff that people like the guy, you know, Matt from Quantum of Conscience and, and other people. It's just that I can't, 
really wrap my head around like the whole the concept of this being some kind of magical spiritual thing because I don't really have a clear frame of reference to be able to explain how this shit is happening but I can tell you that it's like well I do feel like I have some sort of power to manifest. You know, people talk about manifesting reality. I feel like me and I don't know, like others, a lot of other people, certain do have like an ability to manifest reality. But it's like we are surrounded on all sides by a massive amount of people that are doing something, I don't know, some kind of sorcery or, or energy vampirism or something in order to manipulate our mindset and our energy field to manifest darkness into the world kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I wish I wish I was a better person I wish that I it's just I don't know what the hell I can do you know I, I, I need well it's like I said it's like I have in order for me to basically be all I can be, I have to get away from these dark energies because the shit just pulls me down into the darkness, basically. If I'm surrounded by dark energies all over the place, it drags me down into it and it affects me negatively and fucks me up. Like, if I can get away from the dark energies and get to a place where the energy is cleared and where it's like a positive energy then I can start to manifest good things, you know? But then along comes the darkness, you know? <laughs> Basically. I guess I should stop this. I would have went out and done DoorDash, it's just... I keep... The car, the vehicle having trouble is one of the main things that's been screwing with me. I mean... Well, I mean, when I'm out doing DoorDash, like, I need that thing to run good. I need it to have some fucking balls, right? I'm trying to go through a fucking four-way intersection, or I'm trying to merge with traffic, and there's cars flying at 65, 70 miles an hour, and I'm trying to merge with the traffic, and I step on the fucking gas, and it's just going, just like slowly, slowly fucking, it starts moving like it's some kind of fucking train or something. You ever see a train, you know, going from a full stop to start moving? It's like, shoom. Ka -choom, ka -choom. It, it's starting to run like that to where like out the gate it's almost running like it's a train or something like it just very slowly starts moving forward and as it moves forward more it starts to pick up speed and then all of a sudden it's okay but like I'm liable to get fucking wrecked into or something with a car running like that you know <laughs> Because, like, DoorDash, just driving around here, it's it's all starting, stopping, starting, stopping. You have to stop all the time because there's all these obstructions, people wandering around in the road, cars stopping for no fucking reason, you know? I'm sorry, man. I, I don't know, man. Fuck. 